Hello, good day everyone. Today we are going to discuss two topics and the number one topic is the embankment loadings and the second is the pressure isobars. For the embankment loadings, uh, long earth embankments with sloping sides represent trapezoidal loads. And when the top width of the embankment reduces to zero, the load becomes a triangular straight load. And the basic problem now is to determine stresses due to a linearly increasing vertical loading on the earth surface. So as you can see in the figure, it shows now a linearly increasing vertical loading no? starting from here, point A at zero, to a finite value of this uh, load Q per unit length at point B. So if you can observe, if the point B here lies in the plane, this plane BC, then our beta is just equal now to zero at this distance x is equal now to a. And our equation for this will be sigma z is equal now to this small q over 2 pi times this quantity 2x over a times this alpha minus the sine to beta, in which this is just equal now to small q times the influence factor z, okay? And if the point P lies, this one lies in the plane BC here, so we can say that our beta is just equal now to zero. And then our x is just equal to a. So this equation is just reduces to this uh, equation 2, which is sigma z is equal now to this small q over pi times this alpha. Since uh, this one no, is uh, 0, so this will just be equal now here. This quantity here is just equal. Equation 1 will just uh, reduce no, to, reduces to this uh, equation here, sigma z is equal now to q over pi times alpha. And as you can observe, uh, we have also here a vertical stress on this uh, vertical sections in which uh, the y-axis is dealing with the depth z and then we have here our ratio of this x over a, okay? And then uh, we can get directly now through this uh, depth z and this ratio x over a we can get directly no the vertical stress or the sigma sub z if we are going to use now this chart however uh, we can still now use this equation 2 or even this equation 1 to calculate the vertical stress sigma subscript z and table 1 here is just uh, a table now for a function of this uh, ratio x over z, I, I, a rather, x over a, this one here, and here is our z over a. And we can get directly now the value of our iz influence factor if our z over a is just this value here, and our x over a is just this value here in this column. So, we can actually get the influence factor I sub Z. So, we can use actually this table no? if you really wanted to. So, we have now here a simple no? illustration of this uh, trapezoidal. Actually, this embankment no? in which we are considering a trapezoidal embankment. And many times, uh, it may be necessary no, to determine the vertical stress, the sigma subscript z, beneath the road and railway embankments, and also even uh, beneath the earth dams. And the vertical stress beneath the embankments may be determined by either the method of this uh, support position, or we can use another method, no, the asymmetrical method. Okay, and this trapezoidal section of the embankment A, this one A, and we have now this uh, here, 
the B, come here, A, B, C, D. So, this is actually now a trapezoidal section of the embankment. And this may be divided into triangular sections, no? By drawing a vertical, vertical line through this point P, okay? So, if we draw a vertical line here, extending upward, so we can actually get, no? And divide this uh, this uh, trapezoidal section of the embankment into triangular sections. Okay. And if our sigma z1, our sigma z2, sigma z3, and sigma z4 are vertical stresses at point P here, due to the loadings of these uh, figures A, and we have now this G. And we have now this E, and we have also now this F, this one. We have also now this G, and we have now this B, and we also have now this section E here. And we have also the D and J, this triangle here. And we have also now this F here, and we have also now this J, and we have now this C which is a triangular section. No? So, if sigma z1, z2, z3, and z4 are vertical stresses no, at point P, due to the loadings of this one, of these four figures actually as uh, stated, no. so the vertical stress sigma z due to the loading may be written as this formula. Okay, so our sigma z is just equal now to the sigma subscript z1 plus sigma subscript z2 minus this sigma subscript, subscript z3 minus this sigma subscript z4, okay? And maybe you may ask, why is it that this is uh, negative, okay? Actually, for this uh, sigma z1, we are considering this point A, uh, this point G, until this one, point A. So, we cons we are considering this triangle, no? So, for this sigma z1. So, this uh, triangle, D, E, and J, is just the negative, no? Sign of the equation because uh, we are only considering no, this portion here okay so if we consider this triangle a e and g and j here so we have uh, to deduct this one because uh, it is not included no in this uh, embankment no so we have to deduct this one that is why it is negative so as for this sigma z2 actually so for this sigma z2, we are considering the point F, the point J, and this point B. So, we need to deduct this sigma z4 because this is now the triangle here. This F, J, and C. And it is not included in this uh, trapezoidal embankment. So, that is why this is a uh, negative. Okay? And uh, proceeding... We can actually use also now this formula, no? Aside from this uh, equation 3, we can still use now this formula, no? In calculating our uh, uh, vertical stress sigma sub subscript z. Okay, so we can still use this one no? as a function of this alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4, in which we are considering this angle here, alpha 1, 2, 3, and 4. And this uh, b1, uh, actually, this B1 no, is just referring now to the width of the of this uh, embankment, actually. And this A1 is just equal now to this distance. No? And for our B2 and A2 also, it's just this one and this one from this figure. And we can use actually uh, either of this equation 3 or equation 4 in calculating the vertical stress proceeding uh, we have now this uh, second method no which is the method of this uh, asymmetrical 
trapezoidal loading and if you are considering this one so we have only three angles here the alpha one the alpha two and alpha three and uh, they are called asymmetrical because the the width no here this width is just equal now to the width of the other side no b and this is also b so they are symmetrical here and they may vary only in the values of a1 and a2 but their width is uh symmetrical no this is symmetrical to this width here so that is why b and b and we are going to use now this formula which is our equation five and calculating now the vertical stress at any depth z considering the three angles involved here the alpha one until the alpha three okay so when the top width here is zero as you can see when this is zero so our alpha two is just equal now to zero no if the top width is zero no so b equal to zero and our alpha two is zero so our formula for for this in calculating the vertical stress will be this sigma z equal now to this q over pi times this uh, alpha one plus alpha three plus this uh, product of x over a one times this alpha one minus r alpha three where this r is just referring now to the ratio of our a1 here over the a2 so just in case this is just equal now to zero no the width is zero so you will use now this formula but in case that this width b is not equal to zero so we can opt to use this equation five here this formula okay and proceeding So we have here this uh, simple chart no uh, in which this is a graph no to determine the compressive stresses from a load varying by straight line law after this uh, Oster tag of 1957 as shown in the right side of your screen here okay so we have now this uh, ratio actually of this uh, b over z and later no we will use this one in our problem application uh, we start with this b over z equal to zero here this curve here equal to 0 0.1 0 0.2 and then relating this one to this influence factor i sub z okay so we need to determine this b over z and the ratio of our a over z to get now actually this influence factor i sub z this one in this axis now in this vertical axis okay so proceeding with a simple problem uh, we have now this sample problem a uh, three meter high embankment is to be constructed as shown in this uh, figure one and if the unit weight of soil used in the embankment is 19 kilonewton per cubic meter calculate the vertical stress due to the embankment loading at points take note p1 p2 and p3 so here this is our point p1 p2 and p3 at a depth z equals now to three meters and we will use the straight line law of of third birds 1957 okay so proceeding our approach for this problem is uh, actually i have prepared a table here for for calculating actually the uh, parameters no this a b and this ratio a over z the b over z and consequently our influence factor i sub z so as you can see uh, the unit weight no of this embankment is given which is 19 kilonewton per cubic meter and since this is a uh, three meter uh, the depth here is three meters so our q is just simply equal now to this 19 times 3 equals now to 57 kilo pascal and as you can see here we have now this uh polygon here uh, color green since uh, we are considering no the point one so this is our point one so if we extend a line up here so the right the left side of the, of this uh point one extending a vertical line is just this uh polygon no? in color green 
okay and its right side is this uh, polygon which is a uh, blue color so since uh, we are considering point one so our block here is just this a c e f referring now to this a to this c to this point e and this f okay so we have now this green uh, polygon and uh, to calculate and determine this value of our a so take note uh, this one no this is our width for this uh, green uh, polygon no? so how much is our width no referring to the this variable b so this is 1.5 so we put 1.5 here how about the a so our a is just simply uh, this uh, length here from this point until here okay so what is the length of this point j until this point okay since uh, this uh, slope is 1 is to 1 our depth is 3 so therefore uh, this one is just 3 minus this 1.5 so this is uh, actually 1.5 so 1.5 plus 1.5 is just equal now to 3 which is the value of our a and we have now this ratio of a over z in which our z is just equal now to this depth 3 meters no so 3 meters divided by 3 meters is just 1 and 3 meters uh rather 1.5 meters divided by this 3 is just a uh, 0.5 okay so later we will uh, calculate the influence factor i sub z so we are done with this uh, four parameters here so after this one so we proceed with this uh, polygon which is blue in color no we are considering e d b f referring now to this point e here d b and f okay so what are the values of our a b and our a over z and b over z with respect now to this uh, polygon so proceeding we have now this value of our a which is three meters because considering this one this is now the width no b and from this point no extending this point here to this point is uh, just the same to the other side since this is one is to one so one is to one so its width uh, here is just simply equal now to our a which is three meters since this is also three meters here and for our b is simply the, from this point to here so this is just equal now to 4.5 here so our a over z then is just equal now to 1.0 and b over z is just equal now to 1.5 so this is uh, about considering the point one okay from this here from this point here extending upward no so we are done here so we proceed now considering point two so our uh drawings no for this uh point two will be this one here so extending a line no vertical line here going upward so to the left side of this uh, vertical line from point two so we have now this triangle actually no we have now this triangle and we denote this one as our point a here gh so a gh which is this uh, red color triangle okay and to the right side is this uh, yellow color polygon here okay so now uh this triangle uh, which is written colored is our E, G, and H here. So our second one is J, K, D, B. So this point here, J, K, D, B. And why is it that we are considering this until this point K? Okay. Actually, you can do you can do this now if we start with this uh, point J, point H, and then we have this point here, point C, D, B. You can do that but uh it's better know that if we that we are going to consider from this point g to to k and then db because we are only go, we are just going to deduct this uh portion here no this triangle actually this hkc hkc afterwards no so that's why we are using this uh, point j point k point d and point b and the last part of this block is hkc which is now this triangle here so later we will just deduct this one no, with a negative sign 
since uh, this is not included in this uh, embankment considering this point too. Okay. So for our uh, block A, G, H here, A, G, and H. So our width here is just simply equal to zero. Okay. And we are only considering this, this distance as our A, which is equal to 1.5. Five. So, calculating the ratio B over Z and B over Z is just equal now to this 0 0.5 and 0, 0.0. And considering this uh, block JKDB, this point JKDB, so we have now these values of our A and B, which is equal now to 3 meters for A and 7.5 meters for B. So, for this uh, A, which is equal now to 3 meters, uh, actually, considering this J, K, D, B, so our A here is just this point here, no? If we extend until this one, so this is just our A. So that's why this is 3 meters. And for our B, it's just the width, no? So from this point until this point, this is now the width of our embankment, which is equal now to 7.5. That's why this is 7.5 here. So, our A over Z is just simply equal now to 3 divided by our depth Z is 3. So, this is 1. And uh, our B over Z is just equal now to 2.5. Okay, so for the last one, HQC, this triangle here, okay. So, we have now these values actually for our A and B. For our A, this is just 1.5, no? Because uh, we are only considering this, no? because we are considering this triangle here, H, K, C. So, from this point to this point is our A. So, that's why this is 1.5. And our B for this triangle no, is just equal to 0. So, take note if we are going to consider no, a triangle only. So, its width is just simply equal now to 0. Okay? So, it's A over Z is just equal now to 0 0.5 and our B over Z is just equal now to 0, 0.0. And I think we are done with uh, uh, this point 2 here. So, uh, we are going to proceed now to point 3. Okay? So, extending a line vertically upward here. So, we have now this figure. Okay? So, we consider, no, the right side of this uh, vertical line from this point 3. So, we have now this figure, no, in uh, color orange. And then, uh, we are considering now this MLDB, this one, point M, point L, D, and B. But, uh, you can still consider, no, if you really want, no, uh, this one only. And there's no need to deduct this uh, point here if you are considering this one. But in our case, uh, we are considering point M, point L, point D, and point B. So we are considering this uh, point here, M, L, and this point C, and this point A here. So that's why uh, we have now this M, L, D, B. And then this point here is our M, M, A, and C and L. So later now we'll just deduct this portion here because this is not uh, part of the embankment. So for our MLDB, MLDB, so our A is just simply equal now to 3 meters. Since uh, this is our M, this is our L and D and B, so we are only after to this uh, value here which is our A which is 3 meters. And for our B is just from point L to this point D, since we are considering this M, L, D, B. So, here is point L to point D is just equal now to 10.5. And it's A over Z and B over G is just 1.0 and 3.5. And this for, for M, A, C, L here, M, A, C, and L. So, we have also now these values of our A and B, which is our A is 3. Okay. So, considering this M, A, C, L, so our A is just from this point here, okay, to this point, since we are dealing with M, A, C, L, okay, so this distance here, no, which is just equal now to this point to this point. So, 1.5 and 1.5, this is just equal now to 3. 
And for our B, it's just simply this value, no? This width here. So what would be now our width here? So distance is 3 meters here from this point to this point, and this is 1.5. So 3 minus 1.5 is just equal now to this 1.5, okay? So our A over Z then and B over Z are just equal now to 1.0 and 0 0.5, okay? So we are done with the A, the B, and the ratios A over Z and the B over Z. So we are going now after to this influence factor I sub Z. So proceeding, so we have now actually these values now of I sub J based on our ratios of A over Z and this B over Z using this uh, chart. Okay, so considering uh, point one, our A over Z is just equal now to 1.0. So, these values of our A over Z, no, in, uh, in this axis. So, 1.0, this one. Uh, from here, uh, we have here this 1.0, no, this vertical line here. So, this is now our 1.0 1 and then B over Z is just 0 0.5. So, this is now our B over Z. So, these curves here are our B over Z, so we are considering 0.5, no? 1.0 and 0 0.5, so this would be it, no? And then extending this one, more or, more or less at this point, no? Here. So we have here, actually, this point here, okay? Extending this one, so it's just about uh, 0 0.39, no? So we have here uh, 0 0.39 as our I sub Z. Okay, the influence factor. Same also for this 1.0 and 1.5. So still the same, this line, no? 1.0 and our B over Z is 1.5. So our 1.5 here is uh, actually, this is 1.4, this is 1.6. So more or less this uh, blue curve, no? This blue curve actually here, okay? This would be now our point two. So more or less our value for this is about... 0 0.465 so that is why this is 0 0.465 and for our point two and we are considering no three blocks agh the jkdb and the hkc so for the agh we have now this a over z equals to 0 0.5 so this 0 0.5 is just referring to this line here no this line okay and uh, 0 is our B over Z. So our 0 is just this one here. This is B over Z 0 extending this one. So this would be now our point here. Okay. So this is just about uh, 0 0.14. So we put 0 0.14 here. Okay. And for the JKDB, we have now this 1.0 and 2.5. 1.0 here and the 2.5 uh, which is our B over Z so 2.5 is more or less no this is 2 and this is 3 so this line here no this uh, red color no so if we are going to estimate so this would be now our since uh, we are dealing with uh, A over Z is 0 0.5 no 0 0.5 So we have here, okay, so we have here this value of 0 0.495, no, this one, which is now our 2.5, so we put here 0 0.495 with A over Z of 1.0 and B over Z of 2.5, okay. And for our third and last point for this P2, uh, 0 0.5 and 0, so it's still uh, the same here, no, 0 0.5 and 0, which is 1, 0 0.14. Rather, no, 0 0.14. And for the last point, the point 3, so we have now this 1.0 and 3.5. So this is now our 1.0. And our 3.5 is way above this one, no? since this is 3. So our value for this is 0 0.50. So we put here 0 0.50. And also for this 1.0 and 0 0.5, so still the same no? with this one, uh, 0 0.39 here. So we are done no, with the influence factor I sub Z. And after this one, uh, we are going now to calculate the values of our uh, effective 
uh, stress, the vertical stress rather, the sigma sub z. Okay? So, proceeding. So, calculating the vertical stress now at point uh, P1. So, we have now the sigma z equal now to this 0 0.39 times our Q, which is equal now to this 57 kilopascal plus this one here. 0 0.465 times this point, uh, 57 equals now to 48.7 kilopascal or our sigma subscript z is just equal now to this 48.7 kilopascal. Okay? And considering the point 2 here, so we have this sigma subscript z equal now to this 0 0.14 times this uh, 57 over 2, no? since this is a uh, triangular uh, uh, in shape, no? so this is uh, 0 0.14 times 57 over 2, and this 0 0.495 times this uh, 57, and last is our 0 0.14, no? considering this HKC, which is also a triangular no? in shape, so that's why this is 57 over 2 times this 0.14 so take note why is it that this is negative okay so this is negative because as we go back now to our previous slides okay so that is just negative because uh, we are considering now that point two here okay this is our first triangle no which is part of our embankment so this is positive okay and the second the second one here is this one no g k d b so j k d b so this is just a a, a polygon no? a polygon a trapezoidal polygon and our third this one our third block is h k c this one h k c so this is not part of the embankment ra uh, rather this is not part of the embankment so that is why uh, we deduct this one since if we are going to consider this uh, JKDB, this JKDB is it is already included in this uh, black JKDB, and we need to deduct this uh, triangle here at this HKC block. Okay, so that is why uh, we have a negative uh, sign there in our sigma subscript G uh, calculation. Okay, so here okay so that is why this is minus 0 0.14 times this 57 over 2 no this negative sign so it is equal now to 28.2 kilopascal here okay and same also now for this point 3 calculating now this uh, black mldb is just equal now to this 0 0.5 here times 57 and this is minus no this is also minus uh, same case here uh, this is not included no this uh, MECL is not included as part of the embankment though so that is why this is a uh, minus here so 0 0.39 times this uh, 57 kilopascal so we get a value of our uh, vertical stress sigma subscript z equal now to 6.3 kilo pascal okay so that would be it now for for this problem since uh, we are only after to this uh, vertical stress no uh, at point one at point two and at point three which are just equal now to 48.7 kilopascal at point one 28.2 kilopascal at point two and 6.3 kilopascal at point three okay so this would be it now for this uh, lucidative problem regarding the embankment loadings. And now we are going to proceed now to our next topic, which is the pressure isobars. Okay. 
So, pressure isobars by definition is an isobar is a line which connects all points of equal stress below the ground surface. And an isobar is a stress contour actually. So, later no, you will uh, understand no, what is this uh, pressure isobar is all about. No? And uh, through the drawings, no, you will better understand what is really this uh, stress contour referring now to this isobar and for our significant depth the depth of uh, of the stress zone which is responsible for the settlement of the structure so that is why it is called no significant depth because uh, this is responsible for the settlement of the building structure and this uh, significant depth ds is approximately equal now to 1.5 times the width of a square or circular footings and if several loaded footings are spaced closely enough the individual isobars or stress, stress contours of each footing in question would combine and merge into one large isobar no? as you can see in our next slide so we have here this uh, drawing no, for the significant depth of the stress zone for a single footing and for this effect of closely placed footings. No? So actually we have four footings here which are closely spaced and according to the definition the significant depth no, considering a single footing is just equal now to 1.5 times the width of the square footing or circular footing. So, in case of a circular footing, uh, we use now that uh, diameter, no? And Tersagi recommended that for all practical purposes, no? One can make a stress contour, which represents 20% uh, of the foundation contact pressure, no? So, this 20% no, is referring now to this 0 0.2 times this small q, okay? And the depth of such an isobar can be taken as the significant depth ds with this one equal now to 1.5 times the width of the footing, uh, which represents no, the set of settlement for the foundation. And Tersaki's recommendation was based on his observation actually that direct stresses are considered of negligible magnitude when they are smaller than 20%. So that is why we start know that our sigma subscript g is just equal now to 0 0.2 of the intensity q because below this uh, 0 0.2 uh, they are considered as negli negligible in, in magnitude no according to the studies when they are smaller than this uh, 0.2 q okay and and that of the most settlement no approximately 80 percent therefore no of that which is uh significant and takes place at a depth less than this uh, uh, ds of 1.5 b so we have now this uh, here the stress zone isobar no this one and in case of a closely spaced footing so in this case we have four here so actually we can make a stress contour no of combining all four footings here considering a significant depth also of 1.5 of your b bar so take note we are using uh, the b bar here okay because the b bar is just equal now to this uh, width no of the four footings b bar so that is why this is 1.5 b bar considering all four footings okay so we are still considering also this 0.2 you know because uh, below below this intensity of 0 0.2 q uh, the magnitude this is uh, considered as negligible already okay so proceeding uh, we have now these pressure isobars of square rectangular and circular footings may conveniently be used for determining vertical pressure d sigma z at any depth z below the base of the footings and the depth z from the ground surface and the distance r no or sometimes we denote this one as x no from the center of the footing are expressed as a function of the width of the footing b so in the case of circular footing this uh, width b represents actually the diameter 
So we have now this figure 2, 3, and 4 here, in which uh, in figure 2, the pressure isobars, no? using in this bosinis uh, formula for square and continuous footing so we you can use actually this this one no? this uh just these are just the pressure isobars no oh we are footing uh relating now to the width no of your footing which is in this case now for continuous we have now this uh the one up of your b is just equal now to this small b and for this square footing you know, here in the right in the left side rather of this uh, figure two we have now this uh, b over two is equals now to small b okay same also for the pressure isobars uh, using bosinis for this uh, uniformly loaded circular footings here okay and we have also with the in figure four the pressure isobars using the wister guard for square and continuous footing here so you can use this one no? if you really wanted to know when you are going to determine the pressure isobars of different uh, footing width. And now we are going to proceed with this simple problem no? regarding the pressure isobars and a single concentrated load of 1000 kilonewton acts as at the ground surface. Construct an isobar for this sigma z equals now to 40 kilopascal by making use of this bosinus equation. Okay, so for our solution here, uh, we try to remember now the bosinus uh, equation for this vertical stress sigma z, which is equal now to this 3q over 2 pi z squared times this quantity raised to the 5 halves of 1 over 1 plus this ratio r sub r over z raised to the squared so from here uh, if we are going to to determine the pressure isobars so we need to get now the formula of our r here no relating r now to our depth z this one z so we have now this formula actually for this value of our r relating now to this depth z and after you substitute no values of your depth z and maybe you will start from zero maybe by an interval of 0.25 or 0.5 so in this case i use a uh, interval of uh, depth z equals now to 0 0.25 no and uh, we have now this result actually for uh at the value of our r uh with a given no depth of z which is 0 0.25 substituting here so we have the, the value of r which is 1.34 and for the 0 0.5 so 1.36 using this formula until we arrive here to 2.75 which our r is just simply equal now to 0 0.74 and this 3.455 uh, which is uh, our r is just equal now to zero no so by this uh you can actually you can actually draw now the pressure diagrams using this uh values of uh, of z and our radius r so if you plot this one no? we have now this uh, simple illustration for this uh, pressure isobars using this data okay but in this case no as you can observe uh the width of the footing is not given no? so that's why uh, we are not uh, using uh the pressure isobars in terms of our width b since uh this 1000 kilonewton acts only at the ground surface no at the ground and if in case that uh the the width of the footing is given so you can use the value of your width b no here so in this uh, z axis here so you can relate no the value of your b the width of your footing but in our case today we are only uh, using this depth z and r since uh, it is only acting no this 1000 kilonewton is acting on the ground surface no so we have here this simple uh, graph no of the pressure isobars uh, using these values of z and r so here this is a uh, 0.25 z 
So our R here is just simply about 1.34, no? So at this point, so considering also at the left side, no? Uh, this one. And also for the 0.5 here, so this point here, about 1.36. And the left side is negative uh, 1.36 until such uh, we arrive here at 0.3455 here in which our R is just simply equal now to zero and you connect all these uh, dotted no, points here and you are really developing now and drawing the pressure isobars uh, considering this 1000 kilonewton, kilonewton acting at the ground surface okay so I think that would be it now for this day and regarding our topics uh, the embankment loadings and pressure isobars and before we end uh, this would be now my references no using Morty, Bodo, Tomlinson and Brahim Das and please like subscribe and share for more updated videos no in our topics uh, regarding uh, foundation engineering and design and once again thank you very much and Thank you for watching and listening and keep safe everyone.